welcome back. Welcome back to Dylan's Little Hobbies. And you know what? Ever since Rogue One, I had an idea for a Star Wars story, and I decided to make it. I have done part one. Go ahead and check that out on my channel if you guys want to. There'll be a playlist at the end of this video, or a playlist card that will come up all about Star Wars The Rise, my fan-made book. I have written part one. I have put it onto YouTube, you guys seem to really enjoy part one, so here I am doing part two. I hope you guys enjoy, and I will of course narrate it, but I am not a professional speaker or a professional writer. This is just a fan made story, made by me, Star Wars The Rise, part two. Let's get into it. Star Wars The Rise 2 the Rise of the Force. Prologue. When Cavan was a boy, he was raised by the Sith, then left for dead, found a way to Jeddah, where he thought he could escape his past, only to have it haunt him once again. When on a job with a few friends, he discovers the Sith blade of his father. He vows to make it his mission to destroy the Sith for what they have done to him. He then starts his job out by going to Dathomir and contacting the mother there. She told him to find a root from a forest tree. She gave him all the information he needed. While on his long journey, he ended up needing just another small job to get some money. Little did he know he was building a droid factory for his sister, a Sith who had the same name as her power. DK. They fought, but Cavan outsmarted her. Using her own power, she made a cliff of which she was trapped on. Instead of finishing her off, he left with his friends to the plant where he hoped to find the root of the forest tree. Chapter 1 The Symbol Cavan opens his eyes and looks around. He's a scruffy-looking fellow with super long, greasy hair and an unwashed beard. He's quite skinny, almost looking like a reaper. He's pale. His eyes are as black as ever. He's in an old shirt and damaged jeans with holes in them. He turns to Jarv. Jarv, an old green Togruta opens his eyes and asks, What is wrong? They both were sitting in a meditating position. Jarv is in a robe with burned holes in it and a few force symbols carved in wood around his neck. His robe's pale in comparison to the old scruffy-looking cloak-like robe hanging in the corner. Cavan gets up and grabs it, tied it around his waist. Does meditating not help you? Jarv asked. Cavan shakes his head. No, that's not it, Jarv. Meditating does help me. Help me focus, but... He then turns to Jarv. I can't find the tree. Are you sure this tree is even on this plant? A lady asked as she head into the room with a plate of cookies. She munches on one and then speaks. I mean, come on, maybe that old witch was crazy. Here we are on the edge of the galaxy in the unknown regions of all things, looking for a tree, a tree, a plant that might have died out a long time ago. We've been here for two months, and haven't found any leads. You're wrong, Kevin says. We have one of the biggest leads you could ever have, Kevin answered. What's that? The lady asked. Jarv looks at him, interested in what he'll say next. This planet, it has no sun to call its own. Just a few dim lights from the galaxy. Not once since being here have we seen any sign of a star, and yet 
Gavin says as he opens the tent of the hut they stand in. Life flourishes here. Here, where there should be nothing but ice and rock. It's warm, with volcanic activity. Clear, clean, fresh water. Even a million dead fish couldn't pollute it. But filled with fish. The air on a plant that shouldn't have any. The air is fresh and clean. And while green plants are in few numbers, there are many colorful ones scattered across the land. It's filled with life. And the inhabitants are kind and friendly. Only a forest tree could purify this much water and warm this place with no sun. Once a forest tree could sustain life on a desolate rock like this, should be. Okay, fine, I get it, she says as she sits on a stool. Don't worry about it, Lit, Jarp says. Well, well, for an old powerful force user, you sure can't find a tree, Lit remarks. Kevin gives a short laugh. <laughs> it isn't that simple. I can sense the energy. Every single thing living gives off not only energy, but a distinct rhythm of energy, a presence. But since I never have seen this thing, I don't know what I'm looking for. Sure, a forest tree would put out 10,000 times what a normal tree would put out. But there are so many plants and animals here. I can't make out the slightest detail. It's too loud here. Well, what about asking the people, then, Lit answered. No good, I've already tried that, Jarv says. As he gets up, Kevin walks around the room as Jarv continues. The people of this plant are primitive, just speaking the basic of basics languages. It's so basic it's hard to make out, but with help from MD3, I've been able to get most of these people's history. Long ago, their planet had a star, but a big rock must have, must be an asteroid or a comet or something, not into them, swinging the planet out. As it got colder and colder over the centuries, the people barely survived, with crops being the first to die, then the animals. They had some advanced technology at some point, and a man ventured out to find help. He found an old woman who gave the man a root with a leaf from a nearby tree on her plant. He then came home and planted it. They say they are the great tree people who live thanks to a tree, but every time I ask them where it is, they shake their heads and yell. Then they all draw and point at the symbol. I can't make out what they are saying, but it has something to do with this symbol. Jarv then draws it on a sum of cloth. It's a circle with a diamond close to the bottom and a triangle near the top. I don't know what it means, Jarv says. Well, now I think we should examine the forest. I know the people of this plant won't let us go, but... We'll go as soon as they all fall asleep. We must, if we are going to get anywhere, Kevin says. Jarf nods in agreement. Lit just smiles and eats all as she knows they will be off this planet soon. And so, when everyone else slept, the three crept into the forest. They left MD3 to tend to the ship. They walked through the forest. As they headed deeper, it seemed to become thicker and thicker, almost like a jungle. Why didn't we just take the ship, Lit asked. Well, for one thing, we don't want the people to know we left. For some reason, they don't want us strangers going too far in here. Or even to look for a tree, Kevin says. Jarf continues. And for another, they've been so nice. We don't want them to turn violent, or we'll never get to the tree. Sneaking around is our best option. 
They traveled all night, and while there was no sun to rise, the plants could tell the time. If it was considered day, the flowers grew as they would open. Blues and purples and pinks, a lot of strange colors and big flowers on these gigantic trees. There would be a lot of strange animals, some bat-like, some rat-like, gigantic insects as well. Then they start to hear something. Hey, that sounds like a waterfall, Lit says. Let's head that way, Kevin shouts. They walked for quite a few more miles as the sound of water gets louder. They then start to come to clear, clean beach. Only thing on it is a few large crabs like beast, catching fish that swim by. And yet the trees still make a canopy completely over the ocean. Look over there, Kevin points out. The ocean falls into a rather big waterfall in a circle right in the middle. A hole almost, like someone drew a hole right in the middle of the planet. There was most likely where the asteroid or comet hit the plant. Hmm, I wonder, what could be at the bottom of that? I feel a strong force connection out there. Why? That's great, Lit says. I'll call MD3 and have the ship- No. Gavin stops her. We don't need to make a fuss. If we do, the people won't let us near here again. We can't waste this opportunity, Kevin answers. Well, what do you want to do, Kevin? Jarvest. What I do best, Kevin says. We'll have to go surfing. I'll use the force to protect us. Trust me, Lit laughs. And then says, all right, I've seen you do crazier things. Why not? Kevin grabs a log and slashes it in half with his blade. He then gets on and rides it through the water. Jarv and Lit jumps on and hangs on for dear life. They then fall down into the hole. Kevin then closes his eyes and uses the force to soften their fall as they fall into it. All right, and I hope you guys liked the chapter. Here you can watch uh, part one as well as the entire series. And here you can subscribe to me as well as watch my latest video. Thank you guys for watching and I am out. Bye.